No, that sucks. Yeah, yeah that Cut sucks. Cut this out, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Three Hit Combo Podcast. My name is Matt, and I'm here with Tam. Yo, what up? <laughs> <laughs> that is not the tagline you had for yourself. Oh, I, you know what? I instantly forgot. You're Can workshopping we try it, again? it. One more time. One more okay. Time, one more time. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Three Hit Combo Podcast. My name is Matt, and I'm here with Tam. What's up, sluts? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So my microphone stand keeps drooping. It's drooping? Yeah. It's a sad day. And I'm having a hard time keeping that thing locked. So, I'm going to just slowly get closer to the table sure. during the Let's podcast. See. No eye contact anyways. Um, How you been? Good. Yeah? Good. I slept 13 hours last night. Yeah? And I'm tired. I slept like six. Are you also tired? Also tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here. I have having a a nice refreshing bottle of water mm-hmm. waking my uh, happy ass up. Yeah. It's delicious. So this is the first podcast in a little while, technically. Because, Eight years. Because Andy and I did a podcast two weeks ago. Yeah. And I lost it. <gasps> no. Yep. It went back to heaven. It did. It went to heaven immediately. How did it how'd you lose it? The file got corrupted. I don't oh. know what the hell the deal was with it. But I couldn't open it. That sucks. Couldn't do anything with it. That really sucks. It's going to be like a lost episode. We'll still name this episode one episode after that, though. So if it was supposed yeah, to be like in, 257, it, this is going to be 258. Yeah, in memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only thing I had from that episode was the, the opening clip that I cut out of it, which was... I think Andy is saying something about how this podcast sucks. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was it knew and was like, well, fine then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you don't get the rest of it. So that was exciting. Um, I've been playing Skyrim the last couple weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to pick that game back up. What the fuck is outside right now? I don't know. I of, to... of all times, to be running some sort of like. Rock Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to pick it up, but I was like, the, uh, I just restarted Breath of the Wild again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to play those two types of games at the same time. Yes, absolutely it is. I think my plan right now is I'm going to <clears throat> get through Skyrim. I want to get through the Dragonborn, Dawn Guard, and main stories. Okay. And then take a break with whatever light-hearted fun game is out there and then probably like the like first head that's eh, not a that's not a break <laughs> <laughs> um but i do need to play cuphead because i'm only like two-thirds through the game okay something like that but after the first of the year i'm gonna start playing the witcher series yes one through three and then after that I'm going to let you borrow Breath of the Wild, and you're going to play that shit. Yeah, sure. You're going to play it on your Wii U. Sure. That thing you haven't plugged up for a year and a half. Yeah. (laughs) Going to play that. (laughs) So, anything else you've been playing before Breath of the Wild? Um, I actually haven't been playing anything. I've been crazy busy. I I work seven days a week now. Fun. Um, Yeah. Um, Anywhere from an eight to a 12-hour shift every day. So... Uh, I don't have any time to play games. I I literally played for an hour and a half yesterday while waiting for my laundry to finish, and then I had to go do something afterwards. So, um, there was a DLC that came out like nine months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, called uh, it was nine months. It's like it's like maybe four months. I was, my timeline is off. Yeah, uh, but it was just like hard mode, and I put it on hard mode and. 
the game wanted you to play hard mode right after you beat it. And so I'm going back in fresh again, and I'm just getting my ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like well, you idiot. <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> play on nice. easy mode first. Um, See, this is why you need to get yourself a Switch. Totally. Absolutely. You, know, you could be playing at work. I would. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love that. Yeah. Just, just uh, teach him martial arts. <laughs> be like, all right, do some more front kicks. Yeah. I, I got to go. I got to go fight this. Go. Calamity Ganon. <laughs> Yeah, that would uh, be fun for you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Someone's bleeding. <laughs> it's not nearly as bad as what I'm going through. <laughs> Come yeah, on. I don't know how to get that Karak seed. There are 900 of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, oh my God, this microphone's killing me. There's something that needs fixed. You ready? If you take this thing and put it closer that way so it's a bit more counterbalanced, I bet that would help. It will probably help. Do you want to just trade microphone stands? No, it, no, it's I'll good. I'll deal with it. No. Um, yeah, I mean, it will probably help, but I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> okay. Do we want to get in gaming news already? Hell yeah, we got a shit ton to talk about. All right. Gaming news so great, you'll be coming back for more. I need it. This is gaming news. So you want to talk about Zelda again? Sure. Uh, so the Game Awards were this past Thursday. Mm-hmm. And Zelda won Game of the Year. Nice. I mean... They're wrong. They're but not. Nice. Though. They're absolutely. They're, they're absolutely not wrong. <laughs> Shadow of War wasn't even on the list. Shadow of War is not the game of the year. What's the game of the year then? Cuphead is the game of the year. Hmm. You think that's true? Yeah. Give me a compelling argument of why. Um, Cuphead is a bigger change of pace than Zelda because no one's done a 1930s style game. Um, it's challenging but fair. Everybody at least eventually gets the hang of it. Um, it has a co-op mode that is a blast. Um, and every boss is unique and charming. And the music is amazing. I hear you, but I am contractually obligated as a Legend of Zelda fan to tell you that that's wrong. Okay. And that the princess needs my help and that I can't be here anymore. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think Cuphead is, is really cool, but The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild did so many cool things, not only for that franchise, but as as gaming as a whole. I think it was super cool. It didn't really innovate on anything new. You know how it won? What? Because Legend of Zelda is in the title. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, it took the Zelda series from, like, a 10 to a 13, and then it took every aspect that was like previously done in like other games and mm -hmm. it just went we're just going to make these things better like this is the pinnacle of this this mechanic in a game this mm -hmm. is the pinnacle of this mechanic in a game and so you've just got like there's almost nothing wrong with the game and even the things that are wrong with the game are really nitpicky are super nitpicky <coughs> It just you the immersion you get whenever you're there is just nuts with this game. Immersion. Mm -hmm. We re we really going on the immersion. Yeah, abso absolutely. For the, for immersion the, is so subjective. I mean, you're not. I mean, you're not wrong, but I mean, I am talking about it, and I'm not a robot, so I'm allowed to. <laughs> I'm allowed to be <laughs> subjective. <laughs> speaking of speaking of immersion, um, I've been playing. I don't know why it took so long to do this, but I'm playing Skyrim with my headphones on. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Immersion. I can hear every footstep. That's a every raindrop. That's how I feel about Breath of the Wild because like Breath of the Wild, uh, its music score isn't is barely there. Um, there's almost no music in the game. Mm. What you'll get is like when the wind blows, you'll get like six notes of a famous Zelda song. Hmm. And so you're like you're running through the field and you you hear the grass go and then you hear. Whoosh, like, Dun, 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 dun. And then you'll continue on. You're like, "Fuck yeah, I am a Zelda game." That's right. Let's go. <laughs> like it's it's 
it's really, really subtle, and it it really adds to to everything. Yeah, yeah. The puzzles are are challenging, but not awful. So it's not. It doesn't have like, like I, I heard uh, another podcast talking about it. it was like the reason they picked Zelda over Mario was the puzzles in Mario were how do I get there? Oh, this is it. I just gotta execute it correctly. And the puzzles in Zelda were how do I get there? Well, give me a second. I gotta figure it out real fast. <laughs> this, um, and like, how many different ways that you can go about something? It's like it, it. It reminds me of like the the original Legend of Zelda, mm-hmm. but just in a three D form. Like, there's a group of enemies over there. Well, there's a boulder up there that I could do that I could push. But there's also exploding barrels. But the, I could also lead them over to this water thing and use an electric sword and just toss it into the water and it would electrocute them. Like, mm-hmm. the game deliberately set all of that up for you and went, how do you want to do it? What weapons and items do you have that are available? The game super deserved it. Hmm. Good case. But the sick part about the games Game Awards was there's a DLC called uh, the uh, Ballad of Champions. Basically, the way the game works is there are these four champions that have to try and help you defeat Ganon, but they died 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. And this is DLC about their backstory because you don't get a whole bunch on them. You get like – you get just just a taste and you go, okay, I understand where we were because in this game, Link has amnesia. So mm-hmm. you shouldn't know a whole bunch about these people. Right. Um. Well, this DLC, they dropped the trailer for it. And the very last words on it were available tonight. I did hear about that. Yeah. That's that's yeah, nuts. It's fucking sick. I it, that that is them going available tonight. We're done with it. Everything's ready. Go for it. Is when I went. Yeah, I'll play again. I'm back. I'm back on it. Yeah. I haven't played this game in three months. I, I love when companies do that. Like, oh, this DLC will be available in three days. Yeah. Available tonight is uh, that's a bar raiser. Yeah, totally. As soon as it's gonna be like this was available last week. <laughs> but, I bet that. But they, no one was looking. I bet that they knew or assumed they were gonna get player or the player of the year. They were gonna get game of the year, mm-hmm. and so they really pushed to make that happen because yeah, I mean people are gonna go out and get this game just just because it's game of the year. The fact that they had the DLC at the same time, mm-hmm. like how many how many sales happened on Friday of of Breath of the Wild. Because of the Game Awards. Like, Probably it's a marketing a bit. move, too. Yeah. Um, that kind of reminds me with um, Fallout 4 at E3, um, the year it came out. Like, we had really not heard anything about Fallout 4. And so then they show you this, and you're like, oh, I can't wait to play that. And then they're like, it's available in November. And they're like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was expecting, like, next November. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, it's three months away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save save your bottle caps. <laughs> Cuphead did win something. It definitely won. Uh, it won for visuals for sure, but it might have also won for sound direction. I'm not positive. I uh, I do actually have a little rundown here. Oh yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I got to I got to hear just the the <clears throat> highlights, and I got to watch the game of the year, uh, because I was at work during most of the three hour stream. Uh, so game of the year, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Best game direction, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. What was, what, do you know the other people in that? that I don't. Category? I don't okay, know okay, the okay. others. I just have the winners. Uh, best narrative: What Remains of Edith Finch. Okay. The best art direction: Cuphead. Let's go. Like that game looks stellar. Like it looks really nuts. Don't give it your pity. I'm. <laughs> I think that game looks really cool. It's definitely not a game for me. Like I'm not gonna sit there and beat my head against the wall. Best so I'm score. Beat I'm gonna beat my dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Best score, uh, near automata. Best audio design, Hellblade. Best performance, Melina Jurgens in Hellblade. I, I think it's Jurgens. Games for impact, Hellblade. Again, Hellblade really. Oh, wait, sweeping. Really sweeping for a game I'm hearing of now. This is a cute little indie title. Maybe. I, I I know nothing about it. Best ongoing game, Overwatch. I can see that. Best okay. handheld game, Metroid Samus Returns. The only handheld game. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Best VR AR game, Resident Evil 7. Yeah, I think I'm really surprised that nobody's taken such a big jump like they did. 
Like, there has not been a full-fledged VR game since. Mm -hmm. At least not the one that's, like, made any news stories. Uh, I know... I know Fallout 4 VR is in pre-order stage. Oh, okay. That game, that VR game still isn't out? The Fallout 4? Mm -mm. Hmm. At least not on Steam, because I saw it on the Steam store. I I guess that's really surprising. I guess we didn't give Resident Evil 7 enough, like, kudos, I feel. Because they made a whole game in VR. Like, the, like, a, like a real game. Yeah. Really, really soon. That, that, happened, that came out, like, what? February, March? I have no idea. That was like Probably somewhere the around there. Yeah. Um, best action game, Wolfenstein 2. Best ask? action adventure game, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I agree. Uh, <laughs> best role-playing game, Persona 5. Best fighting game, Injustice 2. Best family game, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Best strategy game, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. <laughs> there had to be another strategy game out there. Uh, I certainly can't think of one. There has to be. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not... I can't think of one. And I know everyone says Mario plus Rabbids is good. I'm sure it is. But it still plays like Babby's first strategy game. Yeah. I heard it gets really hard later, but I'm sure the scaling just might be a little too slow. Um, best sports slash racing game, Forza Motorsports 7. Most anticipated game, The Last of Us Part 2. Best independent oh, totally. game, Cuphead. Yeah. Best student game. See, they did win the best of best game. Yeah. It's just best I don't have billions of dollars game. <laughs> <laughs> best student game, Level Squared. Uh, trending gamer, Guy Beam. Yeah, his name's uh, like Dr. Disrespect. Oh, boy. He's just a, it's a funny actor who does like... Ah. Esports type humor. He wears a wig and Oakley's. I see. Apparently, oh. he's pretty funny. Ah, okay. Uh, best esports game, Overwatch. Again? Kind of feel like Rocket League got screwed there. You think so? I don't know. Me personally, mm -hmm. I'm not much into esports, but what I do see through the, uh, the Twitterverse always seems to be Rocket League. See, and I'm in the exact opposite, but it just might be our social spheres. Yeah. Hmm. Best esports player, Lee Sang Hyuk. Neat. I'm really happy for that guy. Best esports team, Cloud9. Cloud9, let's go. Best debut indie game, Cuphead. Yeah. Like, Cuphead definitely made a splash. Best Chinese game, JX3HD. My favorite. Best I'm really bad at one. Best mobile game, Monument Valley 2. I'm... I'm... Glad you're glad that yeah. JX three HD took away an award. It, it really did deserve it. Yeah, I I know I used the word pinnacle with the Legend of Zelda, but I misspoke. <laughs> um, industry icon Carol Shaw. Yeah, she was one of the first uh, uh, female programmers ever. Mm -hmm. Ever, it's really cool. Uh, and best multiplayer player unknowns battlegrounds. I heard uh, your boy Andy ended up getting second. In he PUBG. did. Yeah, he got two out of 100. And he was real hype about it. Garbage. Real, real hype coming in second place. If you ain't first, you're last. Exactly. Ricky Bobby's dad taught me that. <laughs> that one day it's show and tell. <laughs> so Discord, once again, offers to assist with Nintendo's Switch chat feature. Okay. I recently downloaded a Discord for Disc uh, nerdy ass card game stuff. I really like Discord. Yeah, it's fun. So this is the second time they brought it up. Like, hey, your chat feature is not that great. You know, you could uh, partner up with a chat company. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we know what we're doing. <laughs> like us. And you've got literal Nintendo dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see the trailer for Soul Calibur VI? Um, I've seen the opening of Mitsurugi putting his sword in the ground about 30 times, but I have not watched the whole thing. Oh my god, so I'm not really a fighting game guy, but Soul Calibur VI has me just up in a tizzy. Up. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Who's and... the special character that getting 
like they had Star Wars and like God of War. Yeah. Who's the? I don't know if there is a special character this Whoa. time. I mean, maybe we just got the announcement, so okay, you know. I mean, normally with those announcements, you like hear yeah. the breathing or like <clears throat> Predator walks out from the shadows or whatever. I think maybe there was something at the very end with someone's like feet, but I'm not sure. It's Bilbo Baggins. Oh from my Lord god! Of the Rings. <laughs> it's coming out on um, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. That's cool. So, you know, they could do, uh, f- the fuck would they do for PC? Like. Clippy. Clippy. They could do Clippy. <laughs> Clippy. <laughs> do you mean to help you size up your body bag, punk? <laughs> uh, Stardew Valley is coming to PlayStation Vita next year. Star- is that just an off-brand Switch? Stardew Valley is going to be on every console. Ever. It's on everything. It's I have it on amazing Nint- Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come out with a cartridge so you can put it on your Super Nintendo, dude. It's, it's forty-five discs for my PS2, dude. You can get it on like your Amazon Fire Stick. Wow. Yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, I almost said H E Y Alexa. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that to the one person that that would affect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love it when other podcasts accidentally slip up and are like, Alexa. <laughs> like, order four cases of lard. <laughs> like, ah, it's in your shopping cart. I got a good one. I got a good one for anyone right. that has an Alexa. Good. Alexa, play Stairway to Heaven by Dolly Parton. By Dolly Parton. <laughs> That's the worst version of Stairway to Heaven. I'm probably going to listen to it on my way. It's a nightmare. Um, So I do have some... uh... Sorry. Yawning after 13 hours of sleep. Um, I do have some news that has come out of the Game Awards. Uh, World War Z game coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Job Simulator follows up Vacation Simulator. Wouldn't that be backwards? Vacation oh, simulator. job simulator follow up vacate. I saw follow ups. So, yeah, vacation simulator is announced. Yeah, um, accounting plus is heading to PSVR. All right, have you seen anything about accounting plus? No, uh, it's a Justin Roiland game. So, the creators of Mick- Rick and Morty mm-hmm. and the, the creator of the Stanley Parable, yeah, they teamed up together and made a game. And the box art called accounting plus looks har- uh, wholesome inside the game is just a clusterfuck. <laughs> it is just everything that the mind of the Rick and Morty creator could could think of and the craziness of breaking what a game is of the Stanley Parable thrown in together. Nice. It you should definitely at least like check out the trailer. I'm not sure it's a game that I'm interested in playing, but you know, I'm happy it exists. I'm happy that other people are going to have fun with it. Mhm. Uh, Bayonetta 1 and 2 are going to the Switch. Bayonetta 3 revealed exclusively for Switch. Yes. Uh, PUBG hits Xbox One on December 12th. Um, and that looks like all the big stuff. Oh, Death Stranding is, no one knows what it is. Yeah. The game's already started. (laughs) Quote, (laughs) Kojima. (laughs) 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 Could you imagine? I want you to imagine this. This, this would be the coolest thing to happen in games ever. There would be entire novels written about this one engagement. Mm-hmm. What if? What if? Kojima loves his IRL games. This entire thing with him and Konami has been marketing for. <laughs> oh Death my god! Training. That would be such next level. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they're in a board meeting and Kojima's like yes I'm literally a god in the video game uh, world um, your company is gonna take a dive <laughs> <laughs> the hashtag fuck Konami will exist <laughs> but Death Stranding will have the sickest marketing campaign ever and <laughs> the four execs at Konami are like What do we have to do? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. That that would be the hypest shit ever. 
All right. Tam, that will do it for gaming. Yeah. Let's go ahead and move on. The hype machine is overloaded and our wallets are empty. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. She can't take anymore. This is technology. So, we're going to start off with climate change. Um, since it is melting Arctic sea ice, there is more travel between there on boats. That's really stressing out the narwhals. Oh, no. Narwhals are having a hard time. They do have anxiety, like the rest of us. <laughs> but no access to modern technology to do anything about it. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. Um, but they're trying to uh, at least lower the traffic. There's only about 175,000 narwhals worldwide. So uh, there's not a lot left to be dying from stress. See, that was my thing. Is like we should just hunt them to extinction and so they won't feel that stress anymore. Right, yeah, sweet release. It's a, it's a mercy genocide. Um, Twitch streamers are getting angry about so-called booby streamers. Well, what's wrong with us? I'm a big fan of boobies. I could see why they would be mad, but I'm not mad. Yeah. As a consumer of said boobies. <laughs> yeah. I am a consumer of boobies. <laughs> <laughs> We're Americans. you damn right we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see how that would be uh, frustrating. Oh, my like... God. One one professional streamer has recorded videos warning the issue has become a crisis of culture. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The culture of boobs that has existed since... It's really interesting that... Year one. Yeah. Ever since Adam had a little bit of that app, I was like, holy shit, dude, cover up. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to let any of these other animals look at your naked body? (laughs) Adam, it's just me and you. Shut up, Eve, (laughs) you whore. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, Eve. (laughs) All right. Uh, State of Michigan may reconsider free bottle water program for Flint. Flint's the place that uh, got their water messed up, yeah? Yeah, it's been 1,323 days since the people of Flint, Michigan have been without clean water. Wow. Although the water is reportedly testing below the federal threshold, pipe replacement and infrastructure change in the city have left residents relying on bottled water. Wow, that sucks. Uh, December 6th, an email from Michigan Department of Environmental Quality spokesman Tiffany Brown indicated that if testing during the final months of 2017 continues to trend well below the federal action level through December, the state would likely revisit the availability of the state-supplied bottled water. Good. I think it's crazy that, like... You think that's good? Well... Because the pipes aren't replaced yet. I mean... Like, the the water may be clean enough, but there's no path to get it to someone's home. Sure. So there's, like, from what I heard, I might have just misheard you, Mm -hmm. was we're doing pipe stuff. But in the meantime, we're supplying the bottled waters. We're looking to supply the bottled water, which is definitely something that needs to happen. They have been supplying bottled water. They're going to rethink supplying bottled water. Oh, no, that sucks. Yeah, yeah that Cut sucks. Cut this out, Matt. <laughs> God, that blows. Yeah, I know. And some people have been without water for... A thousand days. Well over a thousand days. That sucks. Like, this is a very privileged thing to say, but like, why not move? You just get in your cloth covered wagon and just mosey to a different spot yeah just uh leave your job and your house and yeah go find a new one yeah incur all those moving expenses totally for with money you don't have right just be in crippling debt <laughs> but yeah. you know the american way <laughs> all right so that will do it for technology and on that note i got some good stuff in news though nice from all around the world. Oh, 
great Odin's Raven. And Florida. It's so damn hot. This is news. It's good. It's a good job. Woman claims she's had sex with 20 ghosts and prefers them to men. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, Amethyst Realm, a 27-year-old spiritual guidance counselor, says she's had sex with at least 20 ghosts. I like my coffee like I like my men. Ethereal. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the first experience was 12 years ago, she said, after she and her then fiancé moved into a new house. And she felt the presence of a strange entity. Wait, are we assuming that ghosts don't have gender then? Because there could be male ghosts and female ghosts. And it's 2017, so there's like 400 different genders of ghosts. Yeah, she didn't stipulate. Hmm. Nice. At least somebody's getting action, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when... when <laughs> Uh, when someone commented on the number of ghost lovers she's had, his comments bordered on spooky slut shaming. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. That's really funny. Now she wants to get pregnant by one of the ghosts. I've done a bit of research into phantom pregnancies. <laughs> There's a possibility that it is a ghost in you, but people don't know how to carry it to full term. <laughs> All no, that's, right. That's called. <laughs> Only hungry enough for a six foot six inch, and you get in a foot long at Subway. That's <laughs> that's all that is. Uh, she's not the only person to claim have to have sex with a ghost. Really? Singers Bobby Brown and Kesha have also said they've had supernatural sex sessions. That's no fucking way, Kesha. Mm hmm. Was that pre dollar sign or post dollar sign? Hmm. I don't know. Mm. That matters. <laughs> Uh, psychotherapist Tina, that's a lot of Z's and a lot of S's in that name, said it's very possible that ghostly sexual encounters are actually a type of hallucination huh. that occurs between wakefulness and sleep. Interesting. So watch out for them ghosts. Um, I don't know if there's yeah, much to this, but I want to mention it. Um, there's a Hamilton porn parody. They're, uh, coming for you. Huh. Hamilton porn parody. Do they sing? Um, yes, it looks like they do sing. Nice. Um, it ends with a penis duel. A penis duel. Mm hmm So they literally sword fight. Yes. That's fucking awesome. Uh, the complete parody is available at woodrocket.com. Wood Rocket. Is that asking a question? Would you rock it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you love Hamilton, go check that out. Hey, did you hear about uh, August Ames? No. A uh, famous porn star. Yes. Got slut-shamed on, not slut-shamed, but like bashed on social media due to her views on homosexuality. Or yeah. was construed that way. She ended up hanging herself. And us as the defenders of the nudes, just a quick moment of silence. All right, that's what we needed. Thank you. YouTube prankster cements his own head inside a microwave. So, uh, one more time. YouTube prankster cements his own head inside a microwave. I'm confusing the word cements. Uh, like uses the chemical of concrete to put himself in a microwave? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had his friends cement his head inside a microwave oven. It's just a prank. His his pals fed an air tube into a device so he could breathe, and he covered his face with a plastic bag. But their attempt at making a cement mold of his head backfired. You don't say. After spending almost 90 minutes desperately trying to free the man from the appliance, his friend called on fire crews to deal with the consequences. Huh. Um, did he die? He did not die. Huh. Although he could have easily suffocated and been seriously injured. You don't say. I wonder how many coffee stirs they gave him. <laughs> <Just briefly. laughs> you know that's you know how like your plan that that plan came up the same way that like most people play hangman is they look around the room and they're like it's a four letter word. <laughs> uh uh is it lamp? 
No, it's uh, it's not lamp. It's uh, it's a three letter word now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it fan? All right, we got to put your head in something. We're gonna put your head in <laughs> the microwave. <laughs> All right, young Tam. That will do it for this episode of Three A Combo Podcast. Are you are you for real, Papa Matt? Yeah, I'm for real. <laughs> so remember, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Three A Combo Podcast, twitter.com slash Three Combo PC. Search for us on YouTube, Three Hit Combo Podcast, and we are, of course, the defender of the nudes. Three Hit Combo Podcast at gmail.com. So for Tam, this is Matt signing out. <laughs>